Spanish was the enemy in middle and high school. The language itself was pretty interesting, but the way it was taught made me hate Spanish class. For me, it was hard enough just to get C's, and the second that I could drop out, I did. Shortly after, I forgot just about everything, and today, seven years later, I remember nothing. But now, it's time. It's time to challenge Spanish once again. And this time, I'm going to take Spanish down. You see, the only difference between myself now and the me from seven years ago in Spanish high school class, I was very miserable, is well, この so Spanish, prepare yourself. I'm going to see just how much Spanish I can learn in seven days, studying only two hours a day, plus the occasional TV show. I've been holding off learning Spanish until I made this video because I wanted to do this experiment and I wanted to see just how much Spanish is possible to learn with only 14 hours of studying. At the end of the seven days, I'm going to be putting my knowledge to the test. I'm going to be calling up a Spanish online tutor and I'm going to be able to see how much Spanish I've retained and how fluent I am. Sounds like a perfect way to kick off a new language, huh? So here's the plan. I'm going to find a list of the most common used words in Spanish. Out of those words, I'm going to try to memorize the 300 words that I feel will be the most useful for speaking purposes. I'm going to then use some mnemonic tricks in order to help me remember the words that I learn. What does that mean? Well, it's a language technique where I associate a word with an image in my head to better remember it. Let's take the Spanish verb ser as an example. Ser means to be. In order to remember it better, I might think of the sentence sir or ser, you need to be this tall to ride. And the image that will pop up in my head is of an employee telling a small dude that he can't ride on the roller coaster because he needs to be taller. Attaching imagery to the words I learn will help me remember better. In addition to that, I'm going to be adding the 60 most common words from my list of 300 into my Anki deck every day. This adding words process should take one hour. The other hour spent each day will be on using Pimsleur for Spanish, which is the same program I've used to start every single language that I've learned. From day one to day four, I'm going to be mainly adding common words, using Pimsleur, and watching a bit of TV shows. On day five, I plan to go over the grammar and try to break it down step by step. And on day six and day seven, my main focus will shift to watching as much Spanish media as possible. TV shows, YouTubers, music videos, all with Spanish subtitles enabled. And then, finally, I'm going to have the ultimate showdown with Spanish tutors to put my knowledge to the test and to see how much I've learned. So let's see how fluent it's possible to become in seven days. Poder. Poder. Mm, to be able to, can. Can. Poder. Can you give me the powder? Can you give me the poder to see? Bear. Bear. To see. Bear. Bear. Uh, I see you, bear. Say. Disculpe, señorita. You understand? Entiende. 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 Yes, I'm from Chicago. Sí. Sí, un... soy de Chicago. Sí, soy de Chicago. De. 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 Soy de Chicago. Soy de Chicago. So, it is day three. I am feeling a little bit stressed. One of my biggest concerns, even though it's only day three, is the fact that I'm only trying to, I'm only learning the infinitive form of things. If you don't know what the infinitive form is, it's essentially the dictionary form of words. It is to know, to say, to do, 
to think. It's all of these two words, right? The fact that I'm only learning a lot of these verbs in their infinitive form is kind of messing with me a bit because I know it's not going to translate too well to actual speaking. So I'm going to spend roughly 20 minutes extra today to pick apart this video and try to wrap my head around conjugation. Eso, eso, y, y la otra cosa que queremos tener para finales de año. So this is interesting. I'm listening to this interview and just in this one sentence alone, out of the only 150 most common words I've gone through so far, every single word is there except for finales. So, y la otra cosa que queremos tener para finales de año. Mm. Por favor, le... Por favor, el Hotel de Ecuador. Por favor, el Hotel de Ecuador. So, it is day four. I've uh, found something quite cool. So I found a documentary on Theranos, which is the story of Elizabeth Holmes, a whole scandal. I watched the whole thing. I'm, I'm close to the ending now, an hour and 40 minutes in. And it really started connecting the dots between how the grammar works, because the, the documentary is in English, and if you see it right here, it's in English. However, the subtitles are in Spanish, so it's like, I hear certain phrases, and I, I can see clearly in real time the difference. Let me take you through an example. The future of the company was. So, for example, they just said the future of the company. I don't know anything about peligriab, pele, whatever. But el futuro, I'm guessing that means the future. So, I write it down. Obviously, back home. So, for example, right there, he says, obviously, I'm guessing that's obviamente. So, I can go ahead and write that in over here. Obviously. This is just a really cool way that I can get a lot of new vocabulary through using the short amount of vocabulary that I've already learned. On top of that, I've been able to really understand better the past tense in Spanish and how to conjugate verbs, which is very, very useful for the final battle, for the final showdown in a few days. Only 32. Solamente 32. Solo 32. Solo, solo. Today was grammar day, um, it's been a long day, um, I learned some, actually some really useful dope things in Spanish and basically all I did is this, look. You sound so tired today, <laughs> <laughs> but he's been doing it very seriously. It's grammar day, okay? <laughs> I was watching a lot of uh, YouTube videos that have subtitles in Spanish, like for example, Steve Jobs interview, if not that. Death Note episodes. So with these videos, I've been trying to identify the most common like sentence connectors, right? Or phrases or just grammatical things that I don't know, like past tense, future tense. I thought the way to say you want is quiere, but then I hear people saying quería, que quería. I'm like, what is this? So I'm just an investigator today. I'm a private investigator and I'm investigating this grammar. Grammar. The grammar. For example, uh, there's something that in, in Spanish you can see that keeps on popping up. That's lo, lo. I don't know how people use this, so I'm trying to I'm trying to decipher it. There's other things like the the future tense. So if I want to say you know instead of he's talking to, I want to say he will talk. How do I do that? It's not it's not it's not hablar. It's apparently hablara. Some other stuff is the past tense, weird little words like sia in, 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 in Spanish. And yeah, just stuff like that. Stuff that I'm like constantly noticing whenever I'm watching something pop up and I don't really understand how to properly conjugate it. I look at the rules and uh, doing this really helps a lot because I have a lot of um, verbs in my Enki deck that are in their infinitive form, they're in the dictionary form, but I don't know how to, how to conjugate them. And through through watching videos that are in English with Spanish subtitles, I've really been able to see, oh, if I want to say he will do this, I do it this way. Or if I want to say she forgot this, I can do it this way. And it's been one of the greatest helps. So, day five, over and out. No. 
que va a salir entre sus piernas es una cabeza nuclear que lo va a arrasar todo. ¡Ey! En primer lugar, la maravillosa cueva en la que tú metes y ya nunca volverás a ser. Tiempo. Each, every, each, every. Cada aparecer is uh, appear. So today is the final day. I have my lesson in like 10 minutes. I am super nervous. It's day seven. All I've been doing today is reviewing my Anki cards and also watching little, little weird, <laughs> weird videos on YouTube. Um, I'm nervous. I am really nervous. I, I, I feel like I am kind of ready, but at the same time, I'm, I'm not sure. And um, I suppose that's what makes it fun. At the end of the day, I don't want to disappoint you guys, but uh, I don't know. Oh no, it's time. Oh. <laughs> Are you stressing out? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Oh my god. <laughs> So, I'm gonna cut the video right there. This video is already getting quite long. If you do want to check out the second part of the series, make sure that you subscribe because the second part's coming out within a week's time or so. If you don't wanna miss it, subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram because I'm sure the second that the video comes out, I'm going to be making a post there too. But anyways, this week has been one of the most intense yet fun weeks I've had in a very long time. Having a seven day challenge like this really forced me to be consistent and consistency really is key. I would have forgot a lot more information if, if I was studying one day and the next day I was skipping and I didn't have a, a structured plan. But because I had this plan, well, I won't tell you how it turned out because you have to wait for the next video, but um, all I can say is that it helps so much more and it really is such an important thing. All of the language programs I used in this video, like Pimsleur, Anki, they're all linked down below. So if you want to try them out, you can. For Pimsleur, there's a link to an exclusive free trial that my channel's had for a while. I would definitely recommend it if you want to check out Pimsleur. Uh, there's also a link to Anki down below as well. But that's it for me, guys. I really hope you don't miss part two. Uh, definitely subscribe. Don't miss it. Bye-bye.